Good morning, grade 10s. Hope that you are doing well. We are going to move on today to physics. Um, we just finished ecosystems, and I hope that a good number of you have done the ecosystems quiz. I'm actually going to check right now how many of you have submitted it. Um, ecosystems quiz. Looks like I have got eight responses. So, judging by the number of people in your class, that means that I am missing roughly half. So, if you haven't added in the ecosystems quiz yet, please do that uh, as soon as you can. Okay. Um, and from what I can see here, it looks like for the most part, we're getting the same answers for most of the questions, which is a good sign. So I'll release your marks for that uh, as soon as I can. But for the time being, let's move on to physics. Today's lesson is pretty basic. It's just a little introduction. So it uh, shouldn't take too long. Now, I'm hoping that you have some way to print stuff at home. If you don't, it's totally fine. You can just follow along with the stuff on the classroom and work on loose leaf. Totally works. I've had students do that even while they were in my class because they lost their booklets. So that works. Um, but if you can, it would help to have the booklet printed out. So if you can print the booklet out, that would be awesome. Uh, so like I said, just a short little unit intro today, shouldn't take too long. And then I've got a tiny little activity for you to work on after. So uh, physics, what is physics and what should you recall about physics from what you've done in the past? Try to think about on your own if you can right now, some stuff that you remember that your teacher maybe told you uh, about physics if you were in like grade eight or grade nine or even younger, I think maybe grade seven, you do some physics stuff, especially force. A force is as simple as a push or a pull between any pair of objects that results from their interaction. So whenever I ask even my grade 11 and my grade 12 physics students, I say, what is a force? Their response should always just be as simple as a push or a pull, okay? That is what a force is. Now, a lot of times, forces will balance. So we'll have balanced forces on an object. And that means that they're equal in size, but opposite in direction. All of you right now, if you're sitting down or even if you're standing, but if you're not moving, that means that you've got balanced forces acting on you. Because if it was an unbalanced force, that would cause an acceleration. We will get to that. Now, since you have no acceleration, that means that you have a balanced a uh, set of forces acting on you, which just means that they're equal and opposite in direction. As a result of balance forces acting on an object, uh, that means that it will be at rest and it will remain in its current state of rest until an unbalanced force acts on it. So an object that is in motion will remain in its current state of motion until a force acts on it. This is Newton's first law. That's uh, the law of inertia. And what it means is that if we didn't have friction in the world, everything would just continue to slide at its current rate forever until it hit a force that stopped it. Now, right now, friction, I like to call it the, uh, the universal braking mechanism in a way. It's the universal brake. It just wants to oppose motion all the time. Okay? But without friction, uh, objects would remain in their state of motion that they're in right now forever. Now, let's take a look at some examples of balanced forces. So let's take a look at the top left. You've got that skateboarder. Can you see my mouse? You've got that skateboarder, which has uh, 100 newtons of force acting forwards, maybe from you know his or her leg pushing them forward. Uh, but then you'll have the force of air resistance and friction acting against the skater's push uh, 100 newtons in the opposite direction. So that means right now, this is a really important takeaway. I want you to think, does that mean that that skateboarder is stationary or does it just mean that that, that skateboarder is not accelerating? Okay. And the, the takeaway here, the actual right answer is that that skateboarder is moving. Uh, they just aren't accelerating. So you can have forces balanced, but still have an object in motion. It just means that there's no acceleration. So what we say is that they're moving at a constant velocity. So a more common example is to see somebody not moving. So here's a person just standing here. You've got gravity acting downwards, but we don't sink into the ground when we stand there. 
There has to be an equal and opposite force acting on us. And that's the floor pushing back up on that person. Same thing for the, the vertical component of the forces acting on this skateboarder. The skateboarder has gravity pulling downwards on them, and then the, the skateboard itself pushed back upwards on that person. I say ground here because I'm including the skateboard as being part of their body, but uh, that's just to make things easier in the physics sense. So you sitting on a chair probably watching this lesson right now, you've got your gravity pulling downwards on you, and then the chair is pushing back up so that you're not moving. You're just sitting there comfortably. All right, and then here's another kind of visual example. You've maybe got two kids uh, playing at recess or something like that with a truck. One is pushing in one direction and one is pushing in the other direction. If that truck is not moving, that means that the forces are balanced on that. Okay, now what happens if we have unbalanced forces? Because we just looked at a whole bunch of balanced forces. What happens if we have unbalanced forces? Unbalanced forces mean that uh, the forces on an object are not equal in size and or, so it could be one or the other, they don't act in opposite directions. So you could have unequal forces acting in opposite directions, that would be unbalanced, or you could have two forces acting in not completely opposite directions, that would also be unbalanced. What that results in is an object that will have a change in its current state of rest or its current state of motion. So if that object was sitting there, that object is now gonna start moving. If that object was moving at a constant velocity, that object is now going to start accelerating. Acceleration is the fancy physics or science term for an object speeding up or slowing down or changing directions. That's what acceleration means. So we don't use acceleration and deceleration. We use acceleration for speeding up and negative acceleration for slowing down could also stop that object. So here are some examples of some unbalanced forces. You know, uh, imagine you're playing tug of war and uh, grade wars, and your team is pulling with a greater amount of force than the other team. Well, that rope and everybody involved inside of that game is gonna start moving in the direction of the greater force, okay? Uh, this bird, the seagull, I think it's a seagull, is got a downwards dive going on of 25 newtons but only 16 newtons of friction uh, opposing it that means that this bird is going to be accelerating downwards 300 newtons of rust uh, of thrust upwards uh on this rocket engine and only 100 newtons of weight this this one is way off. <laughs> uh there should be way more newtons acting upwards but th the idea stands that uh rocket would end up accelerating upwards and then you've got this one here, a couple forces acting. So we add these up, four plus four gives us a total of eight Newtons acting right. We only have three Newtons acting to the left. That would mean that we have an acceleration of five Newtons acting to the left. So that's the nice thing about this as well, is you can actually calculate how much force is going to be unbalanced. This is going to be moving this way. Why can't I draw? There we go. This way. If this is eight and this is only three, it's going to have five newtons, unbalanced force of five newtons acting to the right. This one here is going to have 20 newtons, right? 20 or 50 minus 30 gives us 20. 20 newton, that is terrible. <laughs> Sorry, it's really hard to write with this thing. 20 newtons acting to the left. I'll let you do these other two. Uh, tell me which way you think the acceleration is going to go. I guess I'm telling you that right now. And then tell me by how much, what is its acceleration going to be? Okay, let's move on. Here is your little, so that's it for our balanced and unbalanced forces. Here's your little um, activity that I want you to do. And I just want you to post it in the Google Classroom comments underneath my post. And I'll remind you in the post itself. Um, I want you to examine each of the photos that say your teacher presents, that I'm presenting to you. And in each photo, I want you to identify an example that you can find of forces doing the following: setting a stationary object in motion, speeding up an already moving object, slowing down an already moving object, stopping an object, and changing the direction of a moving object. So you've got a a volleyball game happening here with a spike about to happen and some people going up for a block. 
And then one of the more strange pictures I've ever seen of a hockey game because it's just the inconsistency is really weird. You got a ref, but it's only three v three. There's or it's four v three. I don't know the, the pictures. Uh, but anyways, you've got um, a hockey game. So and, and there's there's fans. Why is there fans if it's I don't know. It just seems weird. Anyways. A hockey game, so you got somebody shooting, somebody going up to a block on the shot, and it looks like uh, right here you can see the puck has made it past that block, so it's going to hit the goalie. Now, you don't have to go at this exact instant, but just go more so what kind of scenarios can you come up with would, this, uh, would you be able to find inside of a hockey game? So you don't have to go at the very instant. Just think about, you know, a hockey game. Um, you know, what was I saying? Setting up a stationary object in motion, speeding up a moving object, slowing down a moving object, stopping or changing the direction of an object, okay? So how would that, how would that happen in a hockey game? How would that happen in a volleyball game? Uh, we'll move on with our notes. Uh, I'm gonna say tomorrow. I think we can move on tomorrow, uh, but I'll let you know. 